Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Everyone's Wrong and I'm Always Right. And today we're going to be taking a look at Jeremy Ether. He's a fitness YouTuber who made a video about protein, and in this video he suggested that animal sources of protein are better suited for athletes than plant sources of protein. And supposedly he provided scientific sources to back up his claims. And today we're going to be taking a look at whether or not his claims stand up under scrutiny. Spoiler alert, uh, they don't because again, I'm always right. But before we begin, I just wanted to mention that one of the people who mods my live streams, Xania, has a sick cat named Theodore. He has uh, an issue with his urinary tract and he recently had surgery and she needs some help with funding. Uh, so if you could chip in some money, I'd really appreciate it. The GoFundMe link is in the description down below. Getting enough protein shouldn't be your only priority. It's vital that you also take into account the sources that you're getting your protein from, as you want to ensure that they're high quality sources because as you'll see in this video, doing so can enable you to maximize muscle growth and optimize your recovery and performance. But before we dive into what the best protein sources are, let's first take a look at what makes a protein source good in the first place. Generally, there's two main factors that determine the quality of a protein source. One, leucine content, which is an essential amino acid shown in a number of studies to be the most potent amino acid at stimulating muscle protein synthesis. And two, digestibility, which is simply the proportion of amino acids from the protein that can then be digested, absorbed, and used for protein synthesis and growth. Thus, the higher the leucine content and the higher the digestibility of a protein, the better it will be for muscle repair and growth. So what protein sources meet this criteria? Well, research has indicated that animal-based protein sources are generally better for protein synthesis and growth than plant-based protein sources. And the reason for this, as explained in this literature review from the Journal of Nutrition, is that animal-based proteins typically have a higher digestibility and a higher leucine content than plant-based proteins do which are also often deficient in other essential amino acids as well. Okay, so the main problem with the research that Jeremy is referencing here is that it only looks at acute measurements of muscle protein synthesis. So these studies that Jeremy is, is looking at, they're only measuring muscle protein synthesis within a few hour window, within two, three, four hours. And although yes, Animal sources of protein do tend to boost muscle protein synthesis to a greater degree than plant sources of protein within this few hour window. That doesn't actually mean that animal sources of protein will result in more favorable body composition changes over the long term, over several weeks or months worth of training. And this was actually mentioned in the literature review that Jeremy cited. So either Jeremy didn't actually read this paper or he's just cherry picking information from this paper. So Jeremy completely ignored this section of the paper which took a look at chronic reliance on plant sources of protein over a period of several months. And in this particular study, they had test subjects follow 12 weeks of resistance training, and they split them up into two groups. One group followed an omnivorous diet, the other group followed a predominantly uh, vegetarian diet. And initially what they found was the people following an omnivorous diet had greater increases in lean body mass, so they grew more muscle, but it was later demonstrated that increasing daily dietary protein intake from 0.78 grams per kilogram of body weight to 1.15 grams per kilogram of body weight eliminated the differences between these groups. So in the end, uh, the vegetarian group ended up gaining the same amount of muscle as the omnivorous diet group uh, so long as they increased their protein intake. So although there definitely are differences between animal and plant sources of protein, these differences are negated once you reach a certain threshold of intake, and that seems to be around 1.15 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. Now, I know some of you might say, well, okay, at that threshold of intake, there isn't a difference between plant and animal sources of protein, but animal sources of protein still have an advantage because at suboptimal levels of intake, you will have a, uh, a better ability to gain muscle with animal sources of protein. And although that is true, this has to be put into context. There's a pretty large body of evidence suggesting that the ideal protein intake for strength athletes is 1.62 grams per kilogram 
gamma body weight. A recent systematic review and meta-analysis found that protein supplementation beyond total protein intakes of 1.62 grams per kilogram per day resulted in no further resistance exercise training induced gains in fat-free mass. So ideally, you should be consuming 1.62 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight, and this is well beyond the threshold of 1.15 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight, where you wouldn't expect to see any differences between plant and animal sources of protein. So at adequate levels of intake, there is no difference between plant and animal sources of protein when it comes to facilitating body composition changes in response to resistance training. So Jeremy's interpretation of the science is wildly inaccurate. Again, at appropriate levels of intake, there's no difference between plant and animal sources of protein, but animal sources of protein do have an advantage when it comes to suboptimal levels of protein intake, and this is only practically relevant when it comes to people who are following extremely calorically restrictive diets, uh, but again, there are still workarounds for this. You can take protein supplements and BCAA supplements that are plant-based. So based solely on the criteria I mentioned earlier, whey protein powder comes out on top. It's been shown in multiple papers to have both the highest leucine content and the highest digestibility when compared to various other protein sources. And since research also indicates that most individuals need roughly 2.5 grams of leucine in a single meal to maximize protein synthesis, it makes it a very practical and calorie-wise option of doing so. Okay, so two things to point out here. First of all, according to double-blind randomized placebo-controlled trials, there is no difference between pea protein, soy protein, rice protein, or whey protein when it comes to facilitating body composition changes in response to resistance training. The problem here is you never provide direct evidence for your claims. You keep just making the false assumption that, oh, because there's some research showing that ingestion of whey protein results in greater muscle protein synthesis within a short window, that somehow means over the course of several weeks or months of training, that will make you grow more muscle, which is just not the case. It, it seems like you don't understand the, what the burden of proof is in this circumstance. And on top of that, it is incredibly easy to get 2.5 grams of leucine per meal on a plant-based diet. For instance, 200 grams of lentils will give you 3.6 grams of leucine, and one 350 gram block of tofu will give you 3.7 grams of leucine. Uh, it sounds like you're just ignorant of plant-based diets in general. And um, I know a lot of you will say, oh, well, you know, animal sources of protein still tend to have higher leucine content. So why wouldn't you just go with the higher leucine content foods, which will uh, help you build more muscle? Well, again, according to research, there isn't any difference between plant and animal sources of protein. And when it comes to leucine in particular, uh, again, there's this plateau effect where there's an upper threshold where you'll get a benefit from consuming a certain amount of leucine, but beyond that, there's no benefit. However, you don't just want to rely exclusively on whey as your main protein source, because if you did, you'd be missing out on the various micronutrients and minerals that other protein sources provide, which can play an important role in your recovery, performance, and perhaps even augment muscle growth. And what's funny here is he's actually providing an argument for consuming primarily plant sources of protein, because plant sources of protein tend to be more nutritious, they tend to be higher in vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals, antioxidants, and fiber. So. Um, again, you seem to be completely ignorant of plant-based nutrition. So what I recommend is stick to whey for your pre or post workout meal, given its convenience and superior digestibility properties, but don't rely on it excessively throughout the day as it's lacking in micronutrients. Instead, it's a good idea to incorporate some of the following high quality whole food protein sources as well. Eggs are very affordable and as I mentioned, rich in various micronutrients. And you can definitely add egg whites to them as well for more leucine and overall protein. Lean meats such as chicken breast, extra lean ground turkey, and grass-fed beef are all great options with a high leucine content and rich in a variety of important minerals. Lean fish such as tuna and oily fish rich in fatty acids such as wild salmon and mackerel are recommended as well. Given the various benefits of their omega-3 content, which as I've stated in past videos, may actually play a role in muscle recovery and growth. Okay, again, you have provided no evidence that these animal sources of protein have any muscle building benefit over plant sources of protein. You keep making these recommendations based, on, based off of false assumptions you made earlier. And the reason I'm making a point of this is because 
animal sources of protein are associated with chronic disease and death. Replacing the animal sources of protein you mentioned uh, with plant sources of protein has been shown to reduce your risk of all-cause mortality. So why would you choose to eat animal sources of protein, which give you no muscle building benefit, and they are likely to cause an earlier death? Now as for plant-based protein sources, although they're essential for vegans and vegetarians, I'd recommend everyone aim to incorporate them as well for both sustainability and the additional fiber, micronutrients, and various phytochemicals that they provide. However, as I mentioned earlier, plant-based protein sources don't stimulate protein synthesis as well as animal-based protein sources do. So I do like that he's still recommending his audience to consume some amount of plant protein for sustainability and health benefits, but he's still making this false assumption that because there's some research showing animal protein is better at uh, stimulating muscle protein synthesis within the short acute window, that means over the long term, animal protein is better for stimulating muscle growth, which just isn't true. Again, at adequate levels of intake, there's no difference between plant and animal sources of protein, so it only makes sense to get your protein from plants because of all the health benefits, the sustainability benefits, and you're going to grow the same amount of muscle. But there are ways to compensate for this. For instance, as shown in this 2019 review by Jordan Tremelin and colleagues, 20 grams of a plant-based protein often doesn't elicit an adequate protein synthesis response. But the consumption of a greater amount of plant-based protein and or mixing different plant-based protein sources raises the muscle protein synthesis response to a significantly greater degree. Therefore, with plant-based protein sources, it's a good idea to ingest a greater amount at a time and or mix different sources within the meal or throughout the day to optimize the protein synthesis this response. So the issue here is he's just taking everything way out of context. Yes, in the study, eating 40 grams of plant protein resulted in greater muscle protein synthesis than eating 20 grams. But in context, what does, what does this matter? In the real world, we're talking about strength athletes, right? We're giving advice for bodybuilders, power lifters, weight lifters. Well, they should be consuming 1.62 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. So in context to the re to real world practical applications what does this study matter so again he's trying to rely on research to put forward this argument but he really doesn't understand the research so to sum the video up here are the main points that you want to keep in mind just note that at the end of the day total protein intake is what's most important for supporting muscle growth so i thought it was funny that he ended his video with a statement because none of the research he relied on accounted for total protein intake don't you think that's kind of important if you're trying to compare plant versus animal sources of protein? Uh, so to summarize, the issue with his video is he provided no direct evidence for his claims, and if you take an objective look at the research, there in fact is no difference between plant and animal sources of protein in terms of facilitating body composition changes when we're looking at adequate levels of intake. So I hope you learned something from this video, hope you found it a bit entertaining, and if you like this video, maybe consider supporting me on Patreon or through my website. I have some funding perks you may find interesting. If you're looking for some vegan apparel, then check out the Vegan Gain store. And if you're looking for online coaching, check out Quality Gains. You can get 10% off of his training programs by using the discount code VG10. And as always, keep making those vegan and plant protein gains. Beef. What a relief. When will this poisonous product cease? This is another public service announcement. You can believe it or you can doubt it. Let us begin now with the cow. The way it gets to your plate and how.